today from, from my series. This your pen? Probably. There's three of them up in my head. Uh, Mark 11. Somebody finds it quick, can you read that? Then Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Last week, I talked about the tongue and how it was used. The words we say, the way we say them, I talked about how easy it is to spit out words that do harm to others. In James 3, 9 and 10, with it we bless God and Father, with it we curse man who has been made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursings. These things ought not to be. At times it seems like the, the tongue has a mind of its own. I have no control over it because sometimes something happens, you know, it just, something just spits out. I say things I shouldn't have said and it does damage. I can apologize, but the damage has been done. Then I turn around and say all kinds of wonderful things about my God, how he loves me, how he loves others, what great, wonderful creation we have. And his blessings. It is so good to know and follow Jesus, being in the light of the world and having Jesus in my life. I explain how wonderful it is and how it changed my life. He changed me into a better person. And because I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I have peace in my heart. Blessing and cursing. These things ought not to be. It's so very important in our daily life that we are diligent to be like Jesus every minute of the day. It's not just the things we do, but it's in the things we say, the places we go, the people we spend time with. The stories we say, the jokes we laugh at. How we respond is when someone says something ugly to us or about us. And this is where this sermon is going today. When people say something to us, <clears throat> when someone says something to me, it hurts me. 
What do I do about it? What do I do with it? The world out there, the sinners, they're watching. Watching what we do, how we act, what we say. The very words we use can inform me. Once the words that I use can and will often come back to haunt me. Just like a boomerang. You throw it out there and it comes back. You call yourself a Christian. And you do and say that is often the response of a non-Christian. That church is full of hypocrites. Look how they act through the week. But then they go to church and say, oh, I'm such a good teacher. How can you be that way? You know the Bible says you shouldn't do that. You know the Bible says you shouldn't say that. Why do you act that way? You're just a hypocrite. I just thought oh, I should have a glass of water, but that's okay. If you take a glass of water, no, it's all right. I, I, I would use it as a as a, an illustration. You have about half a bottle of water. You got a whole bottle. No, I don't want a whole bottle. You got half a bottle. Plus, you got your coke in here. Yes. <laughs> Bring it up here. Wow. <laughs> we'll do something to it. Not to your coke. You want it? Yes. Sacrifices. <laughs> Take a good look at that water. Let me get this off of here. I put in there? Very little. A couple drops. It changed the color. You say put more in. I'll just go another, another weekend to the bar. How's that? Change. Do you want your coat back? <laughs> sure. There it is. I don't need it anymore. This is what happens to our religion. When our talk doesn't match our walk. Comes tainted. If you take a drink of this, 
Being as I like Coke so much, I'm not going to take a sip of it. But it won't taste like water, and it won't taste like Coke. If anybody wants to try it and tell me what it tastes like, that's fine. But I'm sure nobody wants to because it won't really taste good either way. We tell all about the wonderful story of Jesus and his love and how I have changed into a better person. And the only thing others will hear and see is your tainted being, your tainted religion, the wrongs in your life, the things that go against Scripture. James says, therefore, no spring brings forth salt water and fresh water. We must turn to God in helping control our tongue. In Psalms 51, 15, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. That is giving control to God. In Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will always strive with you, nor will he keep his anger forever. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Got a question for you. Do you think God forgave you? Do you think God has forgiven all your sins? <clears throat> the wrongs that you have committed against His will? I see a lot of nodding. Ephesians 1 7, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. When you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, He will wash all the sins out of your heart and wipe the slate clean. God has forgiven you. Because of God's abounding grace, love, and mercy, His patience, that is slow to anger, He has removed your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. If, God has believed, if you believe that God has forgiven you, do you also believe that God has forgotten you? I see some mixed answers. God doesn't just forgive those sins. But he also forgets them. He remembers them no more. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I am, who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will remember your sins. I will not remember your sins. Jeremiah 31, 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. And this is also quoted in Hebrews. 
Right along when he was saying that God will write his law in the hearts and minds of his people. In Hebrews uh, 8 and 10. This is a new covenant that be with his people. The time will come that we will not need to be told by others about God's love and his forgiveness for us. The Holy Spirit is going to tell us. Not only does God forget our sins, but he throws them behind his back. He just tosses them. And don't look back. Isaiah 8, 17. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. He takes our sin, our sin-filled soul, wipes it clean, and tosses our sins behind him. He forgets about them. Isn't that wonderful? All the things that I have done in my lifetime, before I got Jesus Christ in my life and asked for forgiveness, the sins that I have committed, God remembers them no more. <clears throat> what does Jesus say we are to do when someone does us wrong? Forgive, Forgive them. Matthew 6. Verse 15, 14 and 15. For if you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Hmm. That kind of hurts. Because there's some things I keep in mind that I don't want to forgive others for. Does that mean God isn't going to forgive me? Do you believe His Word? Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Then Matthew Peter asked the question, if he sins against me seven times, then I am to forgive him seven times? And what's Jesus' reply? No, 70 times seven. If my math is right, that'd be about 490 times. That's an awful lot. Basically, Jesus is saying it is endless in our forgiving others. Because isn't God forgiving us endless? So therefore, we must forgive endlessly. How often do you forgive that person who bugs you? And rubs you the wrong way. Or says something to you or about you. We have all been, at some point in our lives, been on the receiving end of those daggers that come spewing out of others' mouth. We have all had knives thrust in our hearts. Those words hurt. They leave a scar. Have you forgiven that person? Have you forgiven them 70 times 7? That's a hard one. Forgiven 
the way Jesus forgave you. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Colossians 3.13 Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against the other, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. How much has Christ forgiven you? When you read about the crucifixion, all the nasty things that were done to Jesus, in them couple of days that he suffered and went to the cross. And then he took him out on Mount Calvary and hung him on, nailed him to the cross. What was Jesus' response? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. After all he's been through, and as they were nailed into the cross, he forgives them. He forgave them with his life. He gave it all. Matthew 18, 35. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So you can say the words. You can say all the words you want of forgiveness. But if it's not coming from here, it don't mean nothing. God knows your heart. God knows the intent of your heart. He hears the thoughts of your heart. It needs to be a true forgiveness. The way that Jesus forgave you and I when he died on the cross. I will forgive because Jesus says I must, but I will not forget because nowhere in Scripture does it say I must. I had the opportunity, the privilege of speaking to someone this week as I was driving down the road. The conversation came, came around about an incident that happened with another person. And the comment was made, we had, my sermon is, I said, uh, my sermon is on forgiveness. And I must ask for forgiveness for having acted the way the person did. And that was the response I got. I will forgive because Jesus says I must. But I will not forget because nowhere in Scripture does it say I must. Do you believe that? You should. I did a word search. I'm forgetting. I'm forget. Nowhere in Scripture does it specify that we must forget the transgressions against us. It's an awful lot about forgiving. But nowhere does it say I have to forget it. When that comment was made to me, do you know what my response was? I said, wait a minute. That might be true. But I think you're taking the scripture and just turning it a little bit. Because as I dug through scripture, we need to forget. We must forget. How does Jesus tell us to forgive others? 
as God has forgiven us. How has God forgiven us? Through the death of Jesus Christ. And then what does God do with the sin? He remembers it no more. He throws it behind him. He tosses it away. Now it's not specified particularly that we must do that. But we must look at the scripture and see what it says. We must forgive as God forgave us. Or he will not forgive us. My soul to be cleansed from sin. The idea is that I just need to forgive as Christ has forgiven me. Those words that were said to me that hurt and cut so deeply, that knife that is still in my heart, that scar that I have, have from years ago, I will not forget. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is a prayer we are asking when we say the Lord's Prayer. Do you want God to really only forgive and not forget? What's going to happen when you get to heaven and He remembers your sins? In this line, we are asking God to forgive us as we forgive others. Is God faithful? Does He answer prayer? Yes. So if we're asking Him to forgive us as we forgive others, will He be faithful? He'll forgive us exactly the way we forgive others. So how much have you forgiven the one who has spoken nasty things against you? Have you forgiven them the way God forgives? Jesus says you are to love others as I have loved you. We do that well. And we do our best to show others the same love that God has shown us. Through the things we do, the things we say. Jesus has forgiven us. God has forgiven us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is through the blood of Jesus that we are forgiven. One shows their love for Jesus through love and forgiveness in the same way that God loves and forgives. How much does love God love and forgive? The lawless deeds and the sins I will no longer remember. Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God cleanse your conscience from the dead works of worship the living God? That knife that you keep looking at, that you hold on to. That scar that you keep watching and looking at. They're dead works. They're not doing you any good. Holding on to them. Is it allowing the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse your mind?
If you don't have a clean mind, it will, it will keep you from worshiping God the Father in the way He wants you to worship Him. It will keep you from loving Jesus in the way that He wants to be loved by you. It's a hard pill to swallow. To think that I must forget the things that someone has done to me. And if I don't forget those things, to forgive and forget the way God does, then I can't fully and truly worship my Lord and Savior. So how do we take care of this? Besides the obvious, go on to someone and ask them for forgiveness. How are you going to forget? Sometimes that takes time. Exactly. That wound that's in your heart, it's festering because the knife is still there. You've got to take it out. Let move to heal. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. All our burdens, that weight that we carry of someone that has wronged you, we must take it to Jesus Christ and lay it at his feet. To hear, I don't want it anymore. All our burdens. We can't pick and choose one and bring it back. We can take it back. We must lay them all there. And we must leave them behind. And I think you will find that it life lifts your, the load off your life. It lightens your life. You will find a peace and joy that you realize is there. So when you leave that heartache with Jesus Christ, we must forgive others as God has forgiven us. And the only way we can do that is to also forget, because God has forgotten. He has wiped the slate clean. Lay your burdens down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, such a heavy load that we carry. The things that are said to us, the words that are used against us. Help us to remember, Heavenly Father, the things that were said and done to Jesus Christ on his way to Calvary. As he died to forgive our sins, to clean our sins. Heavenly Father, just to have the Holy Spirit dwell with us. Sit on our shoulder and give us words of encouragement as we go through life. Forgiving and forgetting. 
what others have done for us, to us. Help us, Heavenly Father, to feel your love. Let us pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.